Hello, I'm Justin Gallagher, Associate Publisher of the American Journal of Managed Care. Welcome to This Week in Managed Care from the Managed Markets News Network. This week, the American Journal of Managed Care reported an exclusive, a high-profile effort to bring population health to half of New Jersey's hospitals was launched in September, several days before regulators had approved the network. Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey said its September 10th announcement of the Omnia Health Alliance only outlined its relationships with six health systems and did not require approval from the Department of Banking and Insurance. But press accounts of the plan listed the hospitals where consumers could receive discounts on copayments and that network was not approved until September 15th. The leader of the state's Catholic hospitals, which were mostly left out of the alliance, has called on regulators to halt the Omnia plan. This week, two Harvard Medical School professors argued the merits of having everyone get an annual physical in a pair of editorials that appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine. Dr. Ativ Maroda says annual physicals cost $10 billion a year and they crowd out other more urgent health care needs. But Dr. Alan Garol argues that physicals should be improved rather than eliminated. Seeing the doctor in an unhurried visit helps build trust between the patient and the doctor, but this preventative care can be delivered in other ways and can be helped through the use of electronic records. Goral even argued for an end to reimbursement for annual physicals. Medicare Part D, which pays for prescription drugs for seniors, has been a huge success and an expensive one. That was the consensus of experts who weighed in on the program's successes and flaws at the annual Medicare Conference of America's Health Insurance Plans in Washington. A panel discussing the 10th anniversary of Medicare Part D had different views on whether the recent wave of high prices for new drugs would threaten the program's future. Dr. Ron Cohen of the Biotechnology Industry Organization said there are always patents expiring. But Dr. Steve Miller of Express Scripts said that prices went up 13% this year and more increases are expected. He said prices are rising without a comparable benefit for patients. Lori Riley, Executive Vice President for Pharma, which represents the drug industry, said that value is in the eye of the beholder. Death is cheap. Oftentimes keeping someone alive is expensive. To patients and patients' families, that's a cost that's worth it. Recently, AJMC co-editor-in-chief Dr. Mark Fendrick discussed how the principles of value-based insurance design apply when deciding whether to cover high-cost specialty drugs. So uh, the last, uh, somewhat timely, uh, for our work in the American Journal of Managed Care is where does value-based insurance design fit in this very kind of high-profile, controversial discussion about high-cost, high-value specialty drugs, such as those that treat rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, and now hyperlipidemia. Uh, we don't set the prices of these things. We understand that that is an area of great controversy and consternation. What we care about in the world of value-based insurance design, that patients get the right drug by the right provider in the right time in their disease at the right price. And while we strongly support uh, many of our health plans that we work closely with to recommend strongly through financial and other incentives to get individuals to use first-line low-cost agents such as generic drugs. It's important for people to understand that in most common chronic dis diseases, diseases change over time and multiple therapies are often needed. So what we have put forth is an idea called reward the good soldier, which is something like step edit with copay relief, which means that if you have a disease that has a first-line low-cost therapy and you take it as you should, but the outcome that the patient and the clinician wants doesn't happen, your blood pressure is not lowered, your blood sugar is not lowered, your joints don't feel better in rheumatoid arthritis, then you actually get a copay reduction on what is now considered very high price, often out of reach, branded drugs to treat uh, these conditions. So along the line of clinical nuance, we don't recommend first line of these high cost branded drugs for everyone. But at the same time, we want to make sure that when the clinical needs are were to arise to need a high cost therapy, that the patient actually gets rewarded for doing the right thing and understanding that sometimes there's no option in the low cost drug category. Finally, the current issue of evidence-based oncology features a commentary from two officials with Livestrong, 
about the movement to provide fertility services to adolescent and young adults before cancer treatment begins. You can find the commentary on AJMC.com. For the Managed Markets News Network, I'm Justin Gallagher. Thanks for joining us.